couldn't decide what to wear. Well, I'd have gone for black if I was you. Just trying to keep things light. Oh, and I do hope you're not intending to crunch all the way. I get hungry when I'm nervous, Carol, and I am very nervous. I've got two pies in there and all. Well, I wish you'd warned me. I'd have told Terry to check the tyre pressure. This is my life that's falling apart. Listen, darling, there's every chance that whenever we get to... Where the hell are we going? Derbyshire. Derbyshire. That we'll find that Bob is a fine, upstanding member of the community. So, listen, let's take it nice and steady. Hmm? No gorging. No crying. Unless we have to. Thank you, Carol. That's OK. I am a friend. And I am here for you. So, what does Terry think? Same as me. Bob's a bigamist. Rodney wasn't wearing a tux or anything slimy like that, was he? He played a very low-key mine host. Be honest, Ashley, he had that cravat on his head since the 70s, didn't he? I can just see him. <laughs> Mum, stop it. We had a very nice evening. This isn't about you and him. Anyway, it wasn't just family. We had Ed and Emily join us as well. Must have been a barrel of laughs. Nicola really likes Emily. I wonder if the four of them ever double date. It all makes me a little bit suspicious of Carlos. I never fully trust a man who doesn't choose an intellectual equal. That's my sister you're talking about. I'm not. I'm talking about her boyfriend. Well, don't. You always have to reduce everything to a laughing stock. Where are we, dear? Pull over. Have a look at the map. I could kill that, Terry. Why didn't he mention something before? Well, don't take it out on us, Viv. If I remember rightly, and I do, you've actually dragged Bob up that aisle. I mean, the SAS couldn't have put a stop to that wedding, and they're trained to put the kibosh in events. If Bob's a bigamist, I'm leaving the village. Mm. Bags are first dabs on the shop, then. Carol! Oh, shut up and have another pie. You're jumping ahead of yourself again. Well, that must have cost you all of two ninety-nine. Have a route around in that glove compartment. There's an old pair of my designer shades in there. Where would I be without you? Oh, well, don't feel you have to thank me. Yet. Voted with your feet, then. Been looking all over the place for you. I needed time to think. What can I say? The factory would fall apart without you. Poor you. Please come back to work, Gloria. I need to sack someone. I wondered when you'd check your profit margins properly. Why don't you just sack me? Well, I'd rather close the place altogether than lose you. I'll just powder my nose. And, uh, can you do it in the car? Eric, it's a euphemism. Of course I. Sorry. I'm dead excited. There's usually loads of talent in colleges. Only joking. Not that there's any harm in looking, of course. Are you trying to make me jealous? If you still want to borrow that top for your first day, you might have to give it a rub, though. It's in a bag in the back room. Anna. Feel free. Oh, last night was a nightmare. I thought it was never going to end. And I've just spent half the morning trying to convince my mother that we had a fantastic time. Hey, you're an intelligent woman, your mother. Must be where you get it from. Her and Ashley were laughing about you and Nicola going on a double date with Ed and Emily. <laughs> Hey, I told her off on your behalf. I shan't bother next time. Well, it is funny, though, isn't it? It's what couples do, Carlos. You'd have to lie for me at the last minute. i say I was working late. No chance. You're on your own. <laughs> so, uh, what about Nicola's idea that we all go out together, the four of us? Oh, I think I can feel a migraine coming on already. Mmm, see, you can lie when it suits you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, this is it. Well, that's what the address says. Fir Tree Avenue. 47, 45, or oh, 43. I bet the neighbours haven't got a clue. Well, neither have you, so keep your remarks to yourself. They're probably all in on it. The suburbs are full of it. What? Activities. I can't knock on the door right now, but I suspect there's probably a swingers party going on. What, at 12 o'clock? Since when did a man's libido ever ask the time? Shh, somebody's coming out. Get down. You get down. You could spot that barn. It's a mile off. What can you see? It's Bob. Oh, no. 
Coming out the house, no crime there. Oh no. Oh dear. I want to see. A kiddie. Oh, I'm sorry, Viv. <laughs> Can't be his first wife. Well, he did say he had two kids, Carol. Yeah, teenagers, not babies. Well, well, either way, he's lying. Look at her. She looks so young. I hate him. Mm. I hate her. Not a hint of makeup, and she still looks gorgeous. Right. That's it. The lying, cheating swine. He's gonna die. Stop it! He's, look, he's going. Look. He's leaving. I don't care what he's doing, Carol. Oh, Carol. Look at what Bob's doing. Right. Start the engine. We're going to run him over. We're going to kill him. I'll take the blame. No! Look, he's getting away. Right, we'll go and kill her. Viv, use your brain. What have I done to deserve this? It's just not fair, Carol. I feel so humiliated. And so will she when she finds out, and it won't come from us. Look, I know you're hurting, but this isn't the right way. We're going to track him and make him face it. Come on, Viv. We'll have the last flaming laugh. Feel sick. She walks in here after a day away and it's back to business as usual. We'll be having a little chat about productivity after lunch. What's productivity? How much you're making. About 50 quid a week less than we should be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shouldn't organ grinder be discussing productivity? You're on it, monkey. That's not very nice. And uh, what seems to be the problem here? Uh, Cynthia's just pointing out it's not Gloria's job to lecture us on productivity. Ah, well, it is if she is the productivity manager. Since when? Since now. <laughs> Congratulations, Gloria. You know what I said about it not getting any worse? That woman is nearly a pensioner. Well, give the fella his due. He doesn't seem to see age as any kind of barrier. I only hope I'm that undignified when I get to her age. She must have used a tin opener to get out of that bask. Am I going to wake up in a minute, Carol? Where's she going now? Given him money. It certainly looks like it. What the hell's all that about? I'll tell you what it's about, Vivian. You have got a cradle snatching, granny grabbing, male bigamous prostitute. That's what you've got. It has me thinking he was just Bob. Me 12 years to learn how to reverse. I get a free sort of excitement every time I get it right. At least one of us is happy. I can't see him. What's he doing? Ordering some food. I know this must be horrendous for you, babes, but if the B&B &B goes belly up, I'm going to be a private detective. I think I'd be rather good at it. I wish we hadn't come. I wish I'd just hired a private detective and then I wouldn't have had to have seen all this grubby little mess. Yeah, well, I say we should go to the police. He doesn't want divorcing, he wants prosecuting or castrating. I can't bear it, Carol. Can we please just go home? We've got to see this through to the end. Blimey, he must be starving, that tray's loaded. Well, that's hardly surprising when he spent the whole morning singing to half the women in the county. Just to think, I used to love that man's appetites. Can you still see him? Uh, no. <clears throat> well, where is he? What's going on? What are you doing? I am not going to the police station. No, you're right, Viv. I know, we've seen enough. We'll, we'll go home. Carol? Look, just leave it, Viv. You've seen something, haven't you? I want to know, and I want to know now. Where's the woman? Those kids were just waiting there. That little girl. She's a spitting image of Bob. They're his kids as well, aren't they?
I'll have finished in the kitchen. I'll stay and help behind the bar if you like. No need. Me and Mum can manage. All right. See you later. Yeah, see you later. Thanks, Carlos. Bye, Mum. See you. Weren't you a little bit curt with him? Me? No. What do you think? I don't know. You're usually full of crack, you and him. Are we? Oh, sorry. Did you want him to stay behind for something? No. Never mind. OK, then. Fourth, Mrs. Hope of the day. At least she's got his card marked. Did you see that, Viv? She didn't even speak to him. <sighs> Look at him. He's just a sad, pathetic little creep. <gasps> How many lives has he ruined? How many kids has he got littering up the country? Look, he's off again. Come on, Carol, let's just keep following him. I need to get my strength together if I'm going to tear him limb from limb. Well, one of you uh, has to go. We're afraid to say. Why? Because you're too expensive. I knew this would come in. I'd start with the troublemaker, if I were you, Gloria. You would say that, wouldn't you, you scab? It sounds fair to me. Barring Sam, Cynthia's your fastest worker. I've changed my mind. I was last in. You're also a very solid performer, Lisa. Well, what do you suggest, then? A quick round of dip do magazo. <sighs> According to my calculations, Betty, you're the slowest worker. Me? Oh, Betty always brings the cakes. Oh, anybody can bring the cake. And you've got to admit, you are easily led, Betty. Oh, you'll say anything but your prayers to keep him with bosses at the bird. Can't just chuck her out just like that. The chart never lies. Mm. You'll be able to spend more time with Seth now. Be a good girl, clear your workplace, you're sacked. You didn't tell Carlos I was suspicious of him, did you? I was only joking. Of course I didn't. I don't know where you've got it from that him and I are as thick as thieves. I hardly said two words to him all day. What's the matter? I don't know. My baby's just told me a lie. A little one. But a lie. They're entitled to have a meeting, Eric. I really can't afford another strike. Trust me. You'll have one less worker and we'll all be happy. Um, <clears throat> we've come to a decision. Are you wasting your time, love? No. Go on. As productivity manager, I'm interested in any solutions you may have. Right, well, no one's a natural factory worker. It's all at like training. So Betty stays on, I'll give her extra training, and we'll take a 10% cut in wages for two weeks to cover her till she's up to speed. We can't say fairer than that. Uh, what do you think, Gloria? Oh, this wasn't my idea, you know. They came up with it. We're all agreed. Well, I'm not. Not in a million years would I take a pay cut to carry her. Or anybody else, for that matter. If I could just, um... Oh, dear me. This is rather embarrassing. You may want to demote me, Eric. I seem to have had my coffee cup on Edna's column. What about my column? It's by far and away the shortest of the workforce, Edna. You're the slowest worker. I'm terribly sorry, everyone. Please forgive me. Well... Like Cynthia said, I mean, the training has been abysmal. It... Hands up, all those prepared to take a cut in the wages to help Edna. And we're all getting on so well and all. Admit it. We've lost him. He can't just have disappeared. Oh, I've had enough, Carol. I just want to get back to my little shop and burn every pair of tights in it. You're going to let him get away with this, aren't you, Liv? You're a sucker with men. You just let them walk all over it. Stop! Back up, you silly cow. What now? There's a fire in that field. Look! Where? There's Bob's car. It's a 
flaming barbecue. He's having a party, the dog! Is it just me or is that car rocking? Oh my god, Vivian. He's got a woman in there. No, he flaming hasn't. Just watch who's a walk over. Dignity, Vivian. Dignity at all times. You lying, cheating scumbag! Get out here and bring your tart with you! I'll take you both on! Babe, what are you doing here? Never mind what I'm doing. What are you doing? I'm, I'm pumping up my lilo. You reckon he's pumping up his lilo? Of course he is. What's her name? Get out! Get out here! I'm gonna scratch you to death, you swine! Get off me, you lunatic! What the hell do you think you're playing at? Hello, Bob! At least I'm not a bigamist! <laughs> what? Or a granny grabber! Who? Or a cradle snatching frosty joke! We followed you, Bob! Don't try and deny it, we've been on to you all day! I've seen all the other Mrs. Hope and your brood of kids, the ones you've visited today, that is! You've got no right following me! Or you! It's been my pleasure! If it hadn't been for Carol, I would have seen you taking money off old Biddies for sexual favours! I beg your pardon? That old woman at the B&B slipping you a few quid for God knows what we saw it all! That's Mrs McPherson you're maligning. How dare you? How dare both of you? You'd rather think that than just come and ask me. Yeah, well, if we'd done that, we would miss the whole show, wouldn't we? Yeah, and I bet you've loved every minute of it. Oh, don't you ever go at Carol. You're the liar. You're the one that's messing up women's lives. <laughs> Which women? Me! This woman standing in front of you. You cannot hide behind your flashy smile and your frilly knickers anymore. I've seen it all for myself. You've seen what you wanted to see. And you've had her, your so-called friend, who dump on you as soon as look at you, winding you up and watching you spin. Stop changing the subject. I love you, Viv. You know I do. But you haven't been honest. I'm not a bigger miss. So then why all the games? Are you completely honest with Terry about your past? Yes. Yes, you flame me well is. Actually, Carol, you're not really when you come to think about it. Viv! Oh, come on, I can tell things to Terry that make his head hurt. <sighs> there. That's what I got from Mrs Mack in exchange for one luxury piece of lingerie. Ten letterheads. Well, what for? Because I'm skint. I'm skint and I'm ashamed and I'm fiddling my expenses. Is that it? Oh, I'm sorry it's not a more sordid revelation, ladies. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to finish pumping up my lilo. Oh. I expressly told you that I had two kids. Yeah, but not two kids with every wife. If only you'd have asked me yesterday. You chose to follow her instead of coming to me. I might have been stupid and told a few poor kids, but you two, you're just plain vile. You're weak, Lindsay. I can tell. Please don't let him make a bigger fool of you. But he's made me happier than I've ever been. I really want to believe him, Carol. He'll twist you round his little finger. Please, Viv, I think we should go home now. I am home. You idiot. Stop it! I owe it to myself to listen to what he's got to say. <sighs> you sad, sad woman. <laughs> Poor Viv Windsor! Hope! Desperate enough to settle for any old bit of scrag end. You're supposed to be my friend. You should want me to be happy. I pity you. And I pity you. Why? At least my business doesn't stink a fish. Ah! Ooh, there you go, Eric. Thank you very much indeed. What's the happy event? I've just sacked Edna Birch. You really are a hopeless romantic. <laughs> <laughs> Mum, can you cope if I knock off for a couple of hours? Why? Where are you going? Home to make Ashley's tea. Are you OK? You've been jumpy all day. I must be me hormones. You know I love you, don't you? <laughs> Stop it, Mum. Give us a cuddle. Why well, don't you deserve this? I don't know. Go on then. Be good. I don't mind it when it's the summer nights. Get the barbie going. The radio on. Hey, she's a real looker. But she's a kid. And she's my brother's wife. I rang her and said we'd pop round later. I'd feel such a fool, I couldn't. You will. I want to prove to you that I'm straight up. You lose the shop if you keep following me around. I want it all out in the open. You have behaved really badly. I know. Why couldn't you tell me you hadn't got any money? Well, because you'd have wanted to know why. I do know what maintenance is. You should have been straight about it all. Your three failed marriages and all four kids. I notice you only said three failed marriages, not four. Yet. Do you know what you are to me, Viv? A sucker. You're a bit of a snob who doesn't tolerate weakness in others. I am not. And I am. I've been very weak. I have made an unholy cock-up of my life. Two kids in Spain. I've only just started seeing Carly and Josh again. 
I've got my sister-in-law selling stock on the side. And I tell my boss I'm staying with Mrs. Mac so I can claim expenses while I sleep in a field. It's hardly an edifying tale. I've been a useless father. You are trying to make amends. The worst husband. You saw what Barbara did when she tried to pick up the kids. Four wives. Yeah. Marion Hayes, that's me. But I'm divorced from the first three, with the paperwork to prove it. I suppose you married me in haste and all. Well, if we're going to be honest about it. Right. That's it. But it was the best decision I ever made in my life. So speaks the salesman who wants a bed for the night. You made an idiot out of me. But have I made you happy? No. I have heard you telling Carol. I lied. I know I made you happy. You can't take that away from me. What matters is now, and I know you love me. I'm begging you. Being a salesman's all I've ever got right until you. Please don't walk away. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't. Because I love you, and I'd die for you. Oh, I'm tired of being a good salesman, Viv. Please. I just want to be a good man. Any more lies and you are dead, Bob Hope. I promise, I promise. And don't ever knock selling knickers. <laughs> <laughs>